Hello, Georgina here, and welcome to Sibylla Saturday, where we are learning how to read the 19th century Italian playing card oracle, the Vera Sibylla. A while back, we looked at a Vera Sibylla spread that could be used for tarot. This week, we're doing the reverse. We're borrowing a classic tarot spread to use with the Vera Sibylla. I'm speaking, of course, of the Celtic Cross, a spread that every tarot reader learns. Traditionally, the Celtic cross spread has 10 cards with positions listed as this covers you, this crosses you, what is below you, what is behind you, what crowns you, etc. But this version of the Celtic cross has 11 cards and it has some special timing features not found in any tarot versions I know of. So if you're all about knowing when things will happen, this variation just might replace the one you use for tarot. But before we jump into the spread, if you love oracles such as tarot, Vera Sibylla, and Lenormand, you should know that I post easy to follow instructional videos on those oracles every week on this channel. Consider subscribing and join our community of cartomancers. This version of the Celtic cross comes from Mirko Nigri's book, Sibylla. And it's a book that I'm slowly translating into English from Italian. It's taking a while, but it's a great book. We'll be using one of his sample readings so you can see how well it works with Vera Sibylla cards. And to illustrate the various positions, I'm utilizing the Deck of a Thousand Spreads by Tierney Sadler. I believe this backdrop I'm using came from one of Chris Waldheiser's old tarot kits, but sadly, I do not remember which one. If you know, please tell me down in the comments. I like it because it does not number the order that the cards are placed. That makes it flexible for using with Celtic cross variations like this one. Let's get started. The Celtic cross for Vera Sibylla by Negri doesn't mention pulling a significator card, but if you would like to have one, there are some modern Vera Sibylla decks that include two extra cards, a he and a she, a he and a she, that you can use as a significator. The ones you see here are from the E. Mistrelli della Sibylla deck, details in the description. And I'm not so certain as to the strength of the magnets on this whiteboard. So today I will not be using a significator. So I'll just take those off right now. Okay, so position one, the present situation. The conditions for the querent in the present. Uh, just as in tarot, we start in the present and we get a feel for our querent and what the topic of the reading will be. This card is green in the deck of a thousand situations there uh, because in the deck of a thousand spread system, it is a topic card. In Negri's sample reading, the querent is a young unemployed man who is asking about his future job. The card that turned up here is Fortuna the Five of Clubs. A very fortunate card. Things look very promising for the Querent. And I'll be using traditional Vera Sibylla cards plus their playing card equivalent in case you're using a deck of playing cards as your Vera Sibylla Oracle. Position two, underlying influences. Now in tarot, the card in position two is usually placed 90 degrees right on top of the card in position one. But true to its title, this position goes underneath the present situation. So rotate the card and place it below position one. So instead of it being on top of each other, it's down here. Now the card that turned up here in this sample reading is the letter, the two of diamonds. The Querent's job opportunity will come through a seemingly unimportant letter or email correspondence. Position three, and this is where things get tricky, the past. This position is on the immediate right of position one. Yes, I know. The card signifying the past usually goes to the left or below. 
but setting aside what you're accustomed to and learning new techniques is what builds flexibility and improves your skill as a cardomancer. The card that appeared here is the Old Woman, Two of Spades. A person in the recent past has helped the querent to clarify his ideas, take responsibility for himself, and get busy. And the next two positions indicate future events and specify the timing of those events. Position four, the future, the future for 15 days. And this position is located below position two and tells of an event that is likely to occur within two weeks or so. I used the immediate future card from the deck of a thousand spreads as to distinguish it from a position that appears much later in the spread. The card in the sample reading is the priest, the king of spades. And Negri says of this position, uh, in the next 15 days, the querent will have to make every effort to get the job he wants. It may be necessary to carry out bureaucratic issues in order to be able to produce the documents necessary for recruitment. I have a very different take on this card, but we'll go with Negri's interpretation since he was the reader. Position five, the future three months. This position is to the left of position one. I know, different. And I duplicated the immutant future card because I didn't want to confuse it with a future card that happens later in the spread. And that was just my choice. I'm old. To me, three months isn't a very long time. Your mileage may vary, of course. And again, if you're coming from the world of tarot, well, you will need to readjust seeing this position as the future instead of the past. So, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It goes a little bit differently. And the card that appeared here for Negri's querent is home, two of hearts. His interpretation is that the job opportunity for the querent is advantageous, but involves change that may intimidate him. Perhaps Negri saw this card as indicating that the querent might possibly be required to move for the job. Or, psychologically speaking, the querent may have to move from his comfort zone. Again, my interpretation would have been quite different. I see this card as home and family ties. So, by extension, the job requires that people work very closely together like a family. But again, this wasn't my reading, this was his. Position six is unconscious desires, and this position is above position one, way up here up top. And it indicates what the querent wants to happen in regards to their question and or concern. They may not have voiced this desire, or even been entirely conscious of it. The card that appears in this position can also be a hidden detail about the subject that the querent doesn't feel comfortable talking about. So read the card in this position with kindness. I would go so far as to suggest that when you lay out all of the cards of the spread, read the card in this position silently to yourself first before you start reading out loud for the querent. The card that appeared here in the sample reading is Hope, the Eight of Hearts. This indicates high hopes of the querent. He believes that he has done everything necessary to achieve his goal and that he deserves the job. And now, with the cross portion of the Celtic cross finished, we now move over to the column on the right. And with the traditional Celtic cross spread, same rules kind of apply. We start at the bottom and work our way to the top. So, position seven is the mood of the querent. This position is a bit like the previous one, but the card here signifies something more obvious. So I've used the Attitudes and Thoughts card from the Deck of a Thousand Spreads. Between this position and position six, you should get a really good idea of what is going on in the heart and mind of the querent. Use this knowledge for the highest good and the querent's greatest joy. In the sample reading, the card is Consoling Surprise, the Six of Clubs, which Negri took as a confirmation of the card in the previous position. 
The querent is confident of being able to ensure a good job. He is optimistic to the bitter end. Position 8. Others and external influences. Now, this position is pretty much the same as it is in most tarot versions of the Celtic Cross. The card that appears here will indicate the situation around the querent. And if the querent is about a romance, the card here may indicate the partner. And the card that turned up here in the sample reading is Happiness of the Heart, Five of Hearts, or as I call it, the Dancing Queen. This light, flirty card suggests that someone near the querent wants to offer him a job, but just not a long-lasting permanent one. Temp work, perhaps. Position 9 is the querent's actions in the present. This second position indicating the present, but it is located and focused specifically on the querent's actions. That makes it different from the situation area here. So, similar but different. This is about the querent's actions. So, for Negri's querent, the card that appeared here is the scholar, or the artist, depending on the deck, which is the Seven of Hearts. Says Negri, the querent shows himself to be safe and above all acts in an acute, ingenious way, even if his commitment is unhelpful. I think he means that the querent is clever and earnest and sincere and most dedicated in his efforts. And then we have the 10th position, very similar to ours in the regular tarot spread. The 10th position though in this spread is the future, specifically six months. This is the third position that gives information about the future. Position four was 15 days. Position five was three months. And now we have what's happening within the next six months. So looking at all of the immediate future and then here, that's three, yes, three positions that tell you about the future. The card predicting the next six months for the unemployed querent is an excellent one. It is money, the six of hearts just the kind of card you'd want to see if you were unemployed and hoping to get a new job. Says Negri, work, if carried out with commitment and constancy, will be productive and fulfilling from all points of view. And now, the bonus position. This position can be placed to the right or left of position 10, and it is advice. So, this position, the obviously offers the most helpful advice to the querent. Kind of self-explanatory. The card that appeared here in the sample reading is service woman or maid, depending on the deck. And that would be the eight of diamonds here. To achieve rewarding employment, it is necessary to behave in a practical, organized way. Roll up your sleeves and get to work. Stay humble, hustle hard. And that is a Celtic cross for Vera Sibylla. What do you think of having three timing cards and an extra position for advice? If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. It helps others find the video and it lets me know that you're interested in seeing more about this cool Italian oracle. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And when you do, be sure to click the bell icon so you'll get a notification as soon as new videos are posted.